an asset from the CIA is hunting you down, you're gonna end up in a chase or two. Over the years, Bourne has been in his fair share of car chases, foot chases, and motorcycle chases. This time, we pulled out all the stops to create the most exhilarating, heart-pounding chases the franchise has seen so far. Here's an inside look at what we did. We're trying to make a very grounded sequence and trying to put an audience within the action. Hold on! It's not like a stunt sequence that you would find in other films. They're hard work, these scenes, because a lot of people, a lot of extras, police, burns, cars turned over, broken windows. I'm going to be doing some really hair-raising stuff on a motorcycle. We're not really just going for spectacle, it's all born centric So it's coming up with something that we are doing practically, not with visual effects. Everything you see is real, there's no cheating, it's, it's all real stuff. It's very grounded action, and it's very character-driven action, so we're in there with the actors, the actors are doing a hell of a lot. That was part of selling that this is the authentic Bourne experience. Bourne's trying to save Nikki. The asset is trying to kill the pair of them. There's obviously a lot going on. There's a big story that we have to tell. It's a mad chase through the riots. The most important thing is keeping it safe. You know, we're doing high speeds, things can go wrong, so we've got to be prepared for if things go wrong. Couldn't really do a car chase because, you know, there's thousands of people everywhere and, you know, you don't really want to be ploughing people down. So it was a bike chase we come up with. Whenever we can, we use remote cameras. So either they're positioned in the road or on vehicles, just so there isn't an operator in harm's way. A police bike is used in a chase. So there are lots of needs for the bike. For me, it was very clear that we had to use lightweight enduro bikes and dress them up to look like police bikes, which would enable us to do the kind of stuff that we wanted to do that would completely destroy a real bike. So to get through the sequence, we had 26 of those. It's always difficult when there's two people on a bike and we had great people, you know, riding the bikes. For most of the bike chase, there's two people on the bike. That presents all its own problems straight away. The off-road bikes are traditionally made for one person, so we had to completely strip them and design a subframe on the rear that would enable two people to be on the bike. I rode the motorcycle, but I didn't do any of the incredibly hairy stuff that I never would have been able to get insured for. They have this guy, Paul, who was like the best enduro rider in Europe, who just did things that it would take a lifetime to train for. Matt did a lot, but the specialist stuff, you thought, oh, that's really, you know, I, I could do that on a bike. And then you sort of get on it, and no, there's no way. These guys are fantastic. It was tricky stuff, but he actually made it look really easy. Well, we have a great stunt motorcyclist in Paul, and we have a girl, Katie, on the back and it's actually her first movie as a stunt performer, and she's doing a fantastic job. I mean, they're very brave and very skilled. What's great about technology today is face replacement. Jason Bourne's supposed to be an expert at everything, so what happens is I, I get surrounded by all these experts, and they help me do all of it that I can, and then when I can't do it, they step in and they do it, and, and now they've got the ability to actually put my face on this guy Paul's body, so it's gonna look just like Jason Bourne's doing him in the movie. You want it to feel seamless so that people buy the magic trick. <laughs> oh my god, that's fantastic. Instead of the asset being on a motorcycle, which would have made telling the story of Bourne getting away a little more difficult, a little more challenging, it was decided that we put him in a car. So he's driving his Volkswagen that pretty much the whole front end's on fire. We had a mortar on the front of the car and it explodes. What we found out was it took all the oxygen around the car away and stalled the car. So we had to rework that. So we decided that what we were going to do is run all the air intakes under the car and out the side so it was getting clean air. And it worked. We've got video monitors in there for it to sort of see, but it's, it's still really tricky. We systematically destroyed that car. We drove it into a wall at the end. 
he's always using the particular characteristics of whatever vehicle he's in to his advantage. He can go down alleyways, he can go in smaller spaces. And so he takes him into a place where only the bike can go. It's a mad chase up and down stairs. There's hundreds and hundreds of staircases here for us to choose from. So for sort of our story of what we're telling, it was actually a great location. It's really difficult to film because our cameras are quite heavy. And so we've got another motorbike that chases it. It looks really exciting. We always want the movies to feel like they're in the real world. We've got very tight corners. We're going at high speed. It's full on carnage. It's real gritty, down and dirty stuff. There's a lot of force and energy that'll be on display. 